This one is a new app template uh, that uh, Microsoft Teams is releasing. Uh, it's called Employee Trainings. It essentially helps out all of the enterprises uh, with managing all of these training events across the whole enterprise. Um, this is an app template. So app templates are uh, open source production ready code that Microsoft engineering uh, ships. We have a huge catalog of them. Uh, what we usually do is that uh, we do common business line scenarios and see if there is a demand across customers and publish that code on GitHub. Free to use, free for you to make it your own and start developing with it, start using it in whichever way you want to customize it uh, so that you don't have to do uh, that building from scratch uh, for any of these common business line scenarios. So there's a huge catalog, the link is here. I've also posted it in the meeting chat. So this one in particular um, enables your corporate work uh, to manage events. So there are a lot of learning apps out there which actually help you with um, creating playlists. SharePoint is also great for actually using just less for uh, creation of playlists for different kinds of learning. But this is more focused towards managing those events like by capacity, um, and by setting reminders, managing registrations, and also uh, allowing the users to like express their interest, the trainings that they are interested in, and then uh, also see what their peers are doing so that they can get some inspiration, like people in my team are doing this uh, healthy remote work training. Uh, so I'm more encouraged to actually pursue that. And it creates a, this really collaborative, wonderful space for uh, managing and like sharing, searching for all of these employee trainings. So it can be used very uh, across industries. So I'm going to move to the demo, but before that, just a quick note on the personas. So since it is for employee trainings, first one is the host, event host or a trainer. The trainer could be internal or external. Right now we are focused on internal trainer, but you can also add guest users and make them trainers. Um, this trainer usually, these are very common problems that they want to make learners feel welcome. They want to manage all of these events. They want to remind people to register. If the capacity is hit for that particular event, like a class or a training session only can have like 20 people for an effective discussion, uh, you can manage all of that as a trainer. And then on an event attendee side, um, the really big ask is to actually find out what is going on in my company, uh, like what is going on in the training state, in the as per the interest I have, so that I can find that and then register for those events um, and show that I'm actually learning like new things. Another important ask here is also to be able to search and share these learnings, which are part of this app. So with that, moving to the demo. So I had logged in before. Uh, so I've logged in as an end user, so like an employee uh, accessing the employee training app, and I've just named it as user so that it's crystal clear that this is the user side of things. And then uh, we have a team here uh, created already for employee training demo. And in this team, I went and installed the app. Uh, so this is just like uh, how app templates work, like uh, I had opened that link as well. So there is a huge catalog here and just like any other app template, uh, this one will also go uh, in as a custom app, like an LOB app in your app. So if I go back, um, this will be available in like your build for your uh, company once you deploy it. It's really easy steps to deploy as well uh, before we get into the demo. Um, so it has like all these persona guidance, what each and every field means, like we have all of this in docu documentation. It has a really good documentation guide as well that you can utilize uh, and know more about the technical details um, that are required to actually deploy this app. So from an admin side of things or a learning team type side of things, let me just go back. Let me minimize this. So I am here right now. Um, I just installed this app, but I played around with it quite a bit. So you can see a lot of notifications, but essentially what you do get is a welcome card as soon as the app is installed in this team. And then 
uh, it can actually trigger this action, which is the most important action for any learning team, which is to manage these events. So if I click on add event, um, I should be redirected to this task module, which can help me to add an event right from the board. Uh, so my whole team can actually get notified once that event is created and I don't need to inform like everybody else to coordinate on this particular event. They can just start a chat here. Uh, I can also go to this tab that I can pin um, as an admin or a learning coordinator in this team. And then once I've done that, I have these three essential stages. Uh, any kind of events that I have uh, created but not sent out to people are in drafts. Uh, active ones are the ones that are scheduled events have been, uh, sorry, invitations have been uh, sent out. And then there is the completed cancelled one, uh, which is essentially that. Um, so let's go to uh, the first event creation. So I'm going to use, yeah. So I'm going to use like this event, apps and team meetings. So this is a new feature uh, that has been released in Teams, and I want to train the champion group in my company uh, to be able to utilize like apps and Teams and learn more about it and teach others on my team. So I can upload an image here so it can like go to my library and I can upload an image but I prefer the color, so um, I'm just going to do this, and this is going to show me a little preview. Um, I've already entered the event name. There can be three types of events. In-person is essentially something that is not happening in COVID-19. Um, it's essentially when you book a meeting room inside your office to have an in-person event. Teams is um, a Teams meeting invite, like a standard Teams meeting invite on our calendar. And live event is another type of invite that you can create in Teams meetings. Uh, live event can have up to 1,000 people. Uh, teams meetings currently can have up to 350 people. Uh, it's soon getting extended, like this limit keeps on increasing. And then in-person events, you can manage the capacity as per your office space. Uh, categories, again, as an admin, you can configure these categories so you can keep on adding them if you want to create a category. But essentially, if you've already created them, you can categorize this event. Um, let me choose. So I had actually created a live event. Uh, so one difference between live event and Teams event that I would like to highlight is that if you choose Teams, the meeting invite is automatically created. But if you choose live event, right now we don't have a programmatic way of creating that meeting invite. So you need to paste a URL, which is why I was saying that I have already uh, created an event. So I just created this one. So let me copy the link because this is a live event. I want a lot of people to join. Um, so I have done this as a URL. I can do description. I'm just going to copy paste this um, in my description. And then you can see it's Markdown Unicode is also uh, supported, so you can have like a bit of formatting as well in the invite. Time zone I have selected, and uh, this means that I will need to replicate that. So I'm just going to go with this uh, time, so Tuesday, and then say like 10 to, like, yeah, so the default it is. You can also set the default for a meeting. I'm just going to go with this one. And then maximum number of participants is irrelevant here, but uh, not irrelevant. Like if you wanted to min uh, constrain the event, uh, participants for this particular uh, event, you can do that. So you can put like 20 and what that would do, I will show you in a minute that it will basically close the registration after 20. So although the live event can support like a lot of people, um, your uh, participation for this event will be limited to 20. And then uh, we can go to the next. Uh, I think we yeah, have not selected it. So this is a technical training. OK, so then this is super cool, which is that you can make this event public so that anybody in the org can see it. Or you can make this event private. So let's go with private on this one. And um, then you can start typing the name of a group. So like, let's say remote. I'm just going to push it to the remote support dev team. We uh, support distribution list, STs, and teams. Uh, so you can search for either or just like the name of person. Um, like, I'm not remembering any name. Oh, yeah, this one. So like, I can also add the name of the person, or I can just add uh, like remote support dev. Um, I can also add like one more thing. Uh, let me add another guy, like just for funsies. And I can make this training mandatory for this group. Like one group, it can be made mandatory and the other group is not. So this is also something that we can do. 
and then when we go to next this is a little nice preview of how this invitation is going to look like the beauty of this is that all of this information once it's sent out to everybody um is available there right there in the meeting invite and then i can see as an e event administrator that these are all of my active ones I can take some actions on it as well. Like if I didn't want to do all of these uh, invitation, I want to take some time. I can save it as a draft. And then if I go to my drafts. Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I finished all the drafts. So basically you can do all of these actions in the three dot menu. You can also send reminders to people. So by default, the app reminds uh, five days before and one day before. So you will see these notifications popping up uh, automatically in the people's invite calendar, wherever um, you've shared this invite. Uh, otherwise, you can also remind them. So if before like that day you want to remind everybody, you can send a reminder. You can also export the registration data, or close registration before the due date or cancel the event. So all of these actions are possible. Now let's go to the fun side. So um, this is the user view. This is again, as soon as the app is installed here, you will again get a welcome card. For a user, it's really important that they can actually discover and explore all of these uh, really cool events that your company is scheduling. Um, so I can actually go to discover and then I can go to discover events. Tab, I, as you can see, Sorry, as you can see, uh, I have two meetings that I have just created. Both of them are mandatory. Uh, this is not great for me, but the previous meeting that I created is uh, had uh, 200 slots, so I registered as a participant. And then for this meeting that I just created, uh, since it is mandatory, um, I could have chosen auto registration as well. So when I was making this mandatory, if you noticed, um, like if I go here and then go to edit event. Yeah. So when I am going to this step, I can also automatically register mandatory uh, attendees so that if this training is ma mandatory for these two, they're automatically registered. But I just wanted to show you how registration works. So I'm going to click on registration here um, as an end user and my end user's name is Cameron White. So it also sends me a notification in the app and on the e uh, email as well. So I will get like all of these details that there is a live event happening and I can just directly save this that I'm going to be attending this. So this is really cool and something um, as a huge uh, ask from our customers so that the notifications actually flow to different channels. Now that I've done that, it will show that uh, this event has been registered. So one registered participant here and then available slots 19. If I click on it, I can again see all of the details. Um, I can also cancel my registration if such a thing is allowed, like if I can still cancel. And then I can also see all of my events here. So the ones that I have mandatory appear separately so that I get focused attention there. And then all of the events appear here um, as a filtered list where I can see all events that are happening in my company. I can also filter them as an admin or an end user. Both personas can filter the events. So you can either filter them by, say, category. So you will see uh, the filter done to be like technical events. You can filter them also by newest. The coolest thing that I would like to also like pay a little bit more attention to is this popular in my network. So you can not only uh, filter by newest, which is that which was the new newly created ones uh, that got populated here in discover tab, but you can also choose by popular in my network. So uh, I, I don't know if this is going to be popular in my network. Oh, it is. OK, so this is also popular in my network because the the uh, people in my peer group have taken such a similar technical training. So you can also tweak with this algorithm here. We are right now using People API to customize it to have like that peer network built in or that all of the members of the team, uh, whatever training they are taking, we recommend trainings according to that. So that type of customizations you can do. And then if you see your events, you can again see the ones that you have registered for and the ones that you have already completed. So this is, I think, about it on the uh, demo side of things. It's really cool. The app works in, um, let me go here. So the app works as a 
as a bot and with the tab in it. Uh, the app also works in Teamscope. So as I was uh, showing you earlier here, I think this is a better example. So the, it is part of a team, so I can just go ahead and install it in all teams uh, as per permissions policy or install it in one team. And then last but not the least, you can also do the search and share part. So just like search and share can be also done as a part of this uh, scope. Documentation, everything I've shared. So thank you, Vesa. But really cool stuff. Uh, thank you for sharing the links in the in the chat window. We'll collect them from there. And and the the code was actually scheduled to get uh, released on twentieth of November or around about yes. that.